in the pitch black depths of the ocean, where sunlight is but a distant memory, lurks a creature so bizarre, so alien, that it defies our very notion of what a fish should be. Meet Lasignathus, the deep sea anglerfish that's rewriting the rules of survival in Earth's most extreme environment. If you were to encounter a Lasignathus for the first time, you might be forgiven for thinking you'd stumbled upon an alien life form. These fish possess a body plan so strange and specialized that it defies our surface-dwelling expectations of what a fish should look like. Let's start with the most striking feature, the fishing rod apparatus. Protruding from the top of the Lasignathus's head is a long, slender structure called the elytium. This is actually a modified dorsal fin ray that has evolved into a highly specialized hunting tool. At the tip of this fishing rod is the esca, a bioluminescent lure that Lasignathus uses to attract prey in the darkness of the deep sea. But the surprises don't end there. The elysium of Lasignathus is supported by an incredibly long pterygiophore, a basal bone that can measure up to 85% of the fish's total body length. This bone is capable of sliding back and forth within a trough that runs along the fish's head and back, allowing Lasignathus to adjust the position of its lure with remarkable precision. Moving to the face, we encounter another astonishing adaptation, the jaws. Lasignathus possesses an enormous upper jaw with pre-maxillaries, which are the bones at the very front of the upper jaw, that can be folded down to completely enclose the much shorter lower jaw. These jaws are lined with numerous long hooked teeth arranged in oblique rows, creating a formidable trap for any prey unfortunate enough to be lured too close. The body of Lasignathus is relatively small and slender, with the head taking up a disproportionately large part of its total length, over 60% in some species. The skin is entirely naked, without scales or spines, and is typically a deep chocolate brown in color. This dark coloration helps Lasignathus blend into the blackness of its deep sea environment. One of the most peculiar aspects of Lasignathus anatomy is the extreme sexual dimorphism between males and females. While we have detailed descriptions of the females, male Lasignathus remain something of a mystery. It's believed that, like other deep sea anglerfish, the males are much smaller than the females and may even become parasitic mates. But more on that fascinating topic later. Each bizarre feature, from the fishing rod apparatus to the folding jaws, represents a solution to the unique challenges of deep sea life. In the vast, three-dimensional space of the deep sea, finding food is a constant challenge. Lasignathus has evolved a unique and highly effective hunting strategy that combines patience, deception, and explosive action. At its core, Lasignathus is an ambush predator. Rather than actively swimming in search of prey, it adopts a sedentary posture, conserving energy while waiting for potential meals to come within range. This strategy is particularly well-suited to the deep sea, where food is scarce and the energy cost of constant movement would be prohibitively high. The key to Lasignathus's hunting success lies in its fishing rod apparatus. The fish positions itself in the water column, then extends its elysium forward, dangling the glowing esca in front of its mouth. In the darkness of the deep sea, this twinkling light acts as an irresistible lure to curious or hungry prey. As prey approaches the lure, Lasignathus remains motionless, allowing the unsuspecting victim to draw closer. The positioning of the esca is crucial. It needs to be close enough to the anglerfish's mouth to allow for a successful strike, but not so close that it spooks potential prey. This is where the sliding pateri gyophore comes into play, allowing Lasignathus to make fine adjustments to the position of its lure. When prey comes within range, Lasignathus strikes with astonishing speed. 
Its huge mouth opens wide, creating a vacuum that sucks in the prey along with a volume of water. The long, inward-pointing teeth ensure that once prey enters the mouth, there's no escape. One of the most remarkable aspects of Lasiognathus's feeding strategy is its ability to consume prey that are larger than itself. The jaws and stomach of Lasiognathus are highly extensible, allowing it to swallow prey up to twice its own size. This adaptation is crucial in an environment where meals are few and far between. When you don't know when your next meal will come, it pays to eat as much as you can when the opportunity arises. So, what's on the menu for Lasiognathus? The primary prey items are small bony fishes, particularly lanternfish and bristlemouths. However, Lasiognathus isn't picky and will consume a variety of other prey when the opportunity arises. This includes various invertebrates, such as copepods, amphipods, myside shrimp, and even gelatinous organisms like salps and siphonophores. While Lasiognathus's diverse diet and hunting strategies are fascinating, its reproductive behaviors are equally, if not more, extraordinary, showcasing the extreme adaptations required for survival in the deep sea. The story begins with an incredible degree of sexual dimorphism. In Lasiognathus, this difference is so extreme that for many years, scientists weren't even sure they were looking at the same species. Female Lasiognathus are what we typically think of when we picture these angler fish, large with the characteristic fishing rod apparatus and enormous jaws. Males, on the other hand, are tiny in comparison. The life of a male Lasiognathus is singularly focused on one goal, finding a female. In the vast expanse of the deep sea, where individuals are few and far between, this is no easy task. Males use their enhanced senses to detect pheromones released by females, following these chemical trails through the darkness. When a male finally locates a female, potentially the only one he'll ever encounter in his lifetime, he latches onto her with his mouth. What happens next is one of the most extreme examples of sexual parasitism in nature. Once attached, the male releases an enzyme that begins to dissolve the skin of his mouth and the body of the female. Their tissues fuse, and the male's body begins to degenerate. His eyes, fins, and most of his internal organs disappear until he's little more than a pair of gonads attached to the female's body. In essence, the male becomes a permanent, parasitic mate. He receives all his nutrients from the female's bloodstream, and in return, he provides a constant supply of sperm whenever the female is ready to spawn. A female can host multiple males. This extreme form of sexual parasitism solves several problems posed by life in the deep sea. It ensures that when a male does find a female, he has a guaranteed chance to pass on his genes. It provides females with a constant supply of sperm, eliminating the need to find a mate every time they're ready to spawn. And it allows both sexes to devote more energy to reproduction rather than searching for mates in the vast dark ocean. While this mating behavior has been observed in several species of deep sea anglerfish, it's worth noting that we still have much to learn about the specific mating habits of Lasiognathus. No parasitic males have been definitively identified for this genus, and larval stages remain undescribed. The mating habits of Lasiognathus and its anglerfish relatives represent one of the most extreme adaptations in the animal kingdom. These extraordinary reproductive strategies are just one facet of the remarkable evolutionary journey that has shaped Lasiognathus and its relatives. A journey that becomes even more fascinating when viewed in the broader context of anglerfish evolution. Lasiognathus belongs to the family Thaumatichthyidae, a group of deep sea anglerfishes known for their unusual jaw structures and elaborate escal morphologies. The genus's closest relative is Thaumatichthys, 
with which it shares several key features, including enlarged and hinged premaxillaries, escaldenticles, and a branched upper operculum. However, the relationship between Laceognathus and other anglerfish groups is not entirely straightforward. Some characteristics of Laceognathus are shared with members of the family Onirodidae, another group of deep-sea anglerfishes. This has led to some debate among scientists about the exact taxonomic placement of Laceognathus and its relatives. The evolution of anglerfishes like Laceognathus is a testament to the power of adaptive radiation, the process by which organisms diversify rapidly to fill empty ecological niches. The deep sea, with its unique challenges and opportunities, has driven the evolution of a wide variety of anglerfish forms, each adapted to a slightly different lifestyle or hunting strategy. For example, while all anglerfishes have some form of bioluminescent lure, the specific structure and placement of this lure varies widely between groups. In Laceognathus, we see an extreme elongation of the elysium, creating a fishing rod that's uniquely long and maneuverable. Other anglerfish genera have developed different lure morphologies, from simple glowing bulbs to elaborate structures that mimic specific prey items. Similarly, the extreme sexual dimorphism and parasitic mating behavior seen in Laceognathus and its relatives represent one evolutionary solution to the problem of finding mates in the vast, dark ocean. However, not all deep-sea fish have adopted this strategy. Some species have evolved elaborate courtship displays or pheromone signaling systems instead. The genus Laceognathus itself is a showcase of evolutionary diversification. Currently, six recognized species make up the genus, each with its own unique adaptations and ecological niche. These species are primarily distinguished by the morphology of their esca, highlighting how even small variations in this crucial structure can lead to evolutionary divergence. For instance, Laceognathus amphirhamphus is characterized by having only two bony hooks on its esca, while most other species have three. L. bibi has its hooks placed on a short, fan-shaped appendage, unlike the elongated cylindrical appendages of other species. L. dinema, the most recently described species, has a unique pair of elongate distal escal appendages. These variations in escal morphology likely represent adaptations to slightly different prey types or hunting strategies. It shows us how life can take on bizarre and unexpected forms when shaped by the unique pressures of the deep sea. Moreover, our understanding of Lassignathus evolution is far from complete. The deep sea remains one of the least explored environments on Earth, and new species of anglerfish are still being discovered. Each new finding helps to fill in our picture of anglerfish evolution and deepens our appreciation for the diversity of life in the oceans. If you want to dive deeper into the mysteries of the ocean, make sure you're subscribed to this channel. And don't forget to tap the bell icon to receive notifications whenever we upload new content.